go to the mile out to the pictures in all sorts of weather. Uh, the one thing we never did with Dave is the weather never counted. Uh, I was only too delighted to take him on in a few wrong spots. We asked Peter the referee, but he couldn't take the stress of it. He bought it from the gym. cracking the door to make sure there wasn't too much blood spilled. <laughs> but I would say the college back then was quite different. I mean, I'm sure there are things about Coleman College that, that you didn't realise. Uh, for example, I remember that it was a great tradition we had back then, was every year we had a student strike. Um, it was traditional, yeah. Well, the first year was because that the first year was over the fact they wanted to go on teaching practice, which always been much. <laughs> and the second year there was a strike because they wanted us to do extra exams around second year or something. <laughs> and we said that's not really honest, we had another strike. And the third year we had a strike and for the life of me I, I can't remember why. I think there's just a lot of rain at the time and we said that. <laughs> And we worked it all, we always got support of the staff. And in fact, the staff went on strike one year as well, but it was very short because nobody actually noticed they were on strike. <laughs> uh, another tradition in the college was that because it was so small, everybody knew uh, when somebody's birthday was. So the day of your birthday was traditional, believe it or not, to take somebody at the end of the 11 o'clock lecture around noon and throw them in a diving pit fully clothed. <laughs> and that was, that was done every day. There was always two or three victims has been thrown in. <laughs> and of course people got a bit smart with that and they wouldn't show up the day of their birthday but the solution to that was when they'd come in the next day their locker with all their worldly possessions was teetering on the edge of the three metre board. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really better off but eventually health and safety moved in and we were, we were stopped from throwing people in the diving plate in case somebody got hurt. So we decided to throw them in the Shannon instead. <laughs> <laughs> but if we, had to, if we had to suspend that activity between November and March because the problem was if you didn't get a out straight away your next chance was King John's Castle <laughs> or after that was Foynes so we <laughs> give that up. Um, the, other, the other tradition in the college I know still goes on is indoor soccer was hugely popular and it became so popular that not alone uh, could you get in and play soccer any time of the day but the lecturers had to reschedule their lectures around indoor soccer games <laughs> going on the sports hall and I think that, that was probably uh, the time I enjoyed most in college where you, you took prior, your indoor soccer took priority over your lectures um, <laughs> and the final thing you maybe is different and this was very confusing for visitors is because at the time uh, we a lot of us stayed in Castle Troy you had to walk across the soccer pitch to get to the college there was no road there that it was, in the winter it was a complete mess of mud so everybody in college wore a pair of wellingtons and when you walked through the college all the lockers had wellingtons on top of them <laughs> believe it or not and a lot of people had visited taught they come from agricultural college you know. <laughs> so those things have probably changed but I think some things haven't changed on a serious note I think one of the things that strikes me uh, struck me when I left the college is that when I came in I was told I was going to be a PE teacher and I had no problem with that and I think people leave the college and go on to teach PE but what I didn't realise is that I had actually acquired a set of skills that gave me a lot of other options I remember as well a number of years ago talk, speaking to a group of, of, of uh, undergraduates in, in the sports science degree and their big concern at the time I remember was what jobs are we going to get when we get our sports science degree? I remember speaking to them and saying that really the, 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 what you have to do is you have to keep an open mind on your degree because the caliber of people that actually come to the faculty of sports science and phys ed is excellent. The quality of the course is excellent. And you are actually qualified with a degree that gives you lots of options. So if I was to give you some advice, I would say keep an open mind on what you can do with your graduation out of sports science and phys ed. You can do lots of other things. And I found that myself. I, I was surprised that for me it was professional, professional rugby coaching, but there's lots of other people in my class that have gone through different things. So what I would say is keep that open mind. You know, it's a, you get a high caliber student in, into this faculty and it's a great course and that hasn't changed over the years. Maybe the Wellingtons aren't on top of the lockers anymore, maybe we don't throw people into Shannon. But the people coming out of, of UL now, which was Thoman College, is now as good as ever before, if not better. And it struck me uh, a couple of years ago, I was, I was listening to a, a quiz on the radio, funnily enough, and we all know that 
back then it was Coleman College and NIHE. And somebody was asked on the quiz, what was UL before it was UL? And they said, Coleman College. Well actually that was wrong, it was NIHE. But Coleman College at that time on campus had a huge impact. And they were really the people of the PE and sports science faculties. So you have a big legacy to live.